Welcome back, everybody, to round two of four on this special Halloween edition of Tuesday Night Modern. On the left, we scared up a Michael Farrell. We did. Um, as he's attempting to scare up a W here with his spooky scary costume of... Spooky scariness. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's supposed to be. Neither do I. Oh, he's got a, he's got a hood? All right, he's got a hood. On the right, Matt Minier playing the Allies deck. Uh, this deck is pretty interesting. So it had an, an initial uh, like run of Allies in the original Zendikar deck mm -hmm. uh, block. And then when they returned to Zendikar, they reprinted more. They were not reprinted. They added more to the tribe. Right. So we've got two sets of Allies. So let's versus... see. Let's see how deep you win here. I know the ones in the original Zendikar were the ones that really got big quick. Uh, had a free blade. Had a free blade. Uh, the there's a two drop white one. Had a had a had a free blade. He's got a All right. So company? we've kept it a five land collected company. Something. Uh, this this one is a 3-2 three, for 3 and when your allies come in they everybody gets lifelink that turn. Well that's a terrible ally. hand. We need to enroll Matthew Manier in the Mulligan in Academy. The Mulligan Academy. Get him in. Not an accredited university. Not an accredited university. Although we will take funding from every source including your binder. <laughs> we will. You should start writing this course up. On how to mulligan? Yeah. I'll, I'll have a syllabus by next week. Feral down to 14. So do you think these Going allied deep decks... on some greatness. Do, do you think these tribal decks are just making a huge surge because of they have a new... Ameria Evangel. It's 2-3. Gives everybody lifelink. Kabira Evangel. Oh, I thought it was... I'm sorry. <laughs> Amiria is another on the plane of Zendikar. I thought uh, it was... Amiria is an angel. Oh, no, the allies can pro that color. I'm sorry, I had a different guy. All right, so it allows you to punch some damage in. I don't know if you have any instant speed allies. The card there was Battle Slinger gains haste in plus one plus oh. Uh, looks like we're going to fire off another protection from colors guy. It's going to be pretty good with this collecting company in hand. I'll give you that. Yeah, so do you think these these travel decks are just... Uh, the unclaimed shores has just really pushed them over the top into, into letting all these other tribes compete? Um, the humans deck won the open that occurred here in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. And then last weekend, they went and won a, the classic that happened in D.C. They went and won the classic. They yes, went, they did. They, I don't, it's not the same player, but... You Isn't know. it? I don't think so. Isn't it? I don't think so. I have no idea. Let me do 10 seconds of research. 10 seconds of research. Collins Mullen in Cincinnati. Who was it in D.C.? Matt Lingleberry. Ling? Matt Linger? Let it linger? Uh, abrupt Decay on the Kabira Evangel is going to put an end to Pro Pro Nonsense. So, with these tribal decks, I don't think this ally deck is a real deck. I don't even think it's, like, a good fake deck. Yeah, it says Matt Ling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the humans deck is making a splash because it's uniquely interactive with some of the harder decks to interact with. Right. While presenting a very fast clock. Sure. Yeah, like the it's. First of all, it it curves better. Like its its ideal curve just is much more powerful than the ideal curve out of the allies deck. Correct. Secondly, it interacts way more than this allies deck does with the freebooter. Freebooter, as well as meddling mage. Right. Freebooter plus Meddling Mage is the biggest of games. 
it's a it's a nice little combo together, but just by themselves, they're both very good. Concur. Uh, good at shutting down different decks. The Kite Sail Freebooter is great at getting in there and saving your biggest guys from removal. Right. Rather, your best guys from removal. Uh, Meddling Mage has the ability to just shut down some decks. We saw that most recently on the SCG when uh, Storm Player famously scooped in response to a turn two Meddling Mage game one. You just, you just don't have anything. Yeah, just don't have it. They're like, what is it? I don't have it. I don't have that. What is it? All right, 9 to 14. Our spotter has caught up with life totals. Don't be too hard on him. He doesn't know magic very well. He's not very good at the game. Hasn't been playing it for very long. Oh, down to 12. Looks like he had it way wrong. Okay, that's fine, though. All right, here we go. We're caught up. We'll give him a nice little talking to after the match. There's a Liliana Plus, and what do you know, Matt? Had some extra Landos in his hand. Yeah, he had a million Landos in the hando. Looks like Matt double blocks and gets blown out by Fatal Push. Uh, he got double removal spelled and then beat for four. Oh, is that what happened? That is what looks like happened there. Uh, there was a fatal push and an abrupt decay. All right. Let's see if Matt can bring bring the heat. One of these guys to his side. Feral, the greatness doesn't have much cost this round. Yeah, Feral never takes damage on Bob's. We've been over this. Never takes any damage off Bob's. His greatness comes at no cost. Another right. collected company. Let's see what kind of action Manier can pull. Very hard to whiff on these. Yeah, so if he gets, like, uh, the pro colors and a guy that pumps. Yeah. Um, that That's, like, the ideal scenario here. I said he drew two of the pro colors, guys. He's drawn to. I'm just saying, if you collected that into play, and then you just get like you get to. How about some birdies? Are these the raptors? Some birdies. Manier down to four. Um, so he's got to keep a guy back to block, otherwise he's dead. Um, he's got to deal with his Liliana, or he's dead. He really needs to just recast the collected company. Can he do that? It doesn't look like it. I believe he drew an Aether Vial. Yeah, Aether Vial. He's just dead. Maybe he doesn't realize it. But we do. Look at all this damage. Here's the Umar Raptor, uh, the creature that shouldn't have attacked. It was a 3-3 flyer. So we're going to go on to game two. I don't know what kind of sideboard the Five Color Allies deck has, but this Jun deck has all kinds of sideboard options. You, you probably just want to fix your removal. Yeah, I mean, you probably just want to, like, streamline your removal. I don't think uh, Inquisition's a huge deal here because you're just so much more dominant on uh, the board. Pretty sure you want Inquisition. You want to take any, like... So the way this Allies deck tries to work is to have a good ally on the battlefield and then trigger its coming into play abilities whenever an ally enters the battlefield. Right. As many times as possible. And if you can get rid of that one or two drop, so they're just playing these Umara Raptors on you, you're playing, like, one of the best modern decks of all time against a draft deck, and it's just a joke. Right, against one of the best draft decks of all time. No, not even. Like, one of the most medium draft decks of all time. <laughs> it was a medium draft deck, and the original Zendikar was not where you wanted to be. Uh... The black-green allies deck was pretty good. But you, you 
still got you still got beat by like the man by like by the uh, serious red decks like the good red decks. Oh yeah, were just way better. They were insane. So, are you excited for the upcoming pro tour this weekend? Boy, howdy! Um, I'm pretty interested because you know we we normally have pro tours that are the first piece of a format, like like it's the first iteration. People don't really know what's going on, and that's kind of the point. Like you get the pros in there doing what they're doing best and brewing brewing awesome decks. Um, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, random guy, the Jun player is not an actual necromancer; he's an actual feralmancer. Yes, if you need any ferals manced, he's the man for the job. He can mance he's the all for of the them. job. Uh, am I excited for this pro tour? It's a deviation from the norm, which is pretty cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there's anything new that comes from it, uh, just to see how bad the Magic community is at large, because there's been several large standard tournaments before this. Yes. So if there's just like some off the wall deck that just kind of dominates, and everybody's just like, "Well, I guess I'm a terrible Magic player." Um, it well, I think it's going to be interesting. What you're going to get is you're going to get the most refined decks. So, for example, if you go back to Worlds, the Teamer deck that won, and the other players playing that deck had the one copy of Confiscation Coup, which was like a super important one of. And the well, so most of them had one of Confiscation Coup. The one that said the winning deck apart, I believe, was the one of Carnage Tyrant in the main. Uh, which is wasn't that a Nationals innovation? You're right. That might have been a Nationals innovation, or uh, innovation with uh, whatever one Jerry T was in. Yeah, he was he was playing at Nationals. He had the Carnage Tyrant. Yeah, that was that was a heater. But my point is, is you're going to get these like super refined lists. Absolutely. Um, which I think will be interesting. I, I like it because it's harder to take a... Had it. It's harder to take a refined list into a tournament cold. Yeah. And, like, be very, very good with it than it is to take, like, a list that's a little bit more stock. Just because when a card is more specific, you have to be more specific about how you play it. Absolutely. So I like this idea of a standard tournament because, you, you know, I mean, while everybody loves just copying a deck list and being able to play it, you you won't have that ability after this Pro Tour. Uh, we got a question in the chat. What do you think about main deck Dryad Militant to combat, com, uh, sorry, to combat Storm decks in green-white builds, of course? Um... It's. I mean, it's. It's probably a fine hate bear. What. What else are they playing in the in the one slot? Noble hierarchs probably. Yeah, I. I think that deck probably has enough. Like, does that deck play like two Gaddock Teagues? Yeah, you get some Gaddock Teagues. You get some uh, Thalias. Oh yeah, that deck probably has Thalia. I. It might be unnecessary. Yeah, I feel like the deck already just kind of poops all over Storm. Yeah, it might just be overkill because of the way your cards already interact. What do I think of Esper control decks? Probably not very good. Um, They're fine in standard. No. Probably not Esper. I mean, the blue-black control deck's pretty good in standard. Uh, in modern, though, I don't think the addition of a, an extra color adds much to blue-white. So here's an interesting challenge uh, that, that Matt's having. He's got only lands that can cast creatures, so his collected company is going to be dead in his hand? Pretty dead. Trigger, trigger. Uh, so the Esper player we have here usually plays the Gorio's Vengeance Reanimator deck. You know, the see Matt Matt missed three damage here because they the pro colors guy also had haste. Oh, does he? I think the red card gives gives that guy haste. I think he just has haste. But Feral down to four. Uh, he's gonna need some serious removal to clean up this board. 
we need to start with this Utvara Raptor. Yeah. So Matt had an interesting line here. He could have, if he would have left the red creature in his hand, he can use it like a protection spell with his Aether Vial, and it would not have changed the clock. Well, it dealt two damage here. It dealt two. It dealt three damage, really, because it gave the Raptor plus one. Right. So, so I mean, it kind of changed the clock. Oh man, here's a mom pa. This is gonna be great for slowing down the Sudvar Raptor. Yep. Um, those he has the blue thopter tokens. Notably, mom pa don't make blue thopters. No, he has the wrong thopter tokens, so he's wrong and bad. All right, so, so we get some triggers. Matt should say blue here just because and attack with the flyer, see if Feral misses. That would be a little scummy. <laughs> a little scummy. You can still give all of your guys protection from black, black and then send everything. Yeah, so he has to block with all of them. Yeah, he has to block every all of his non-black creatures. You should have probably said red because Feral's just going to draw a land off of this bob anyway. Yeah, you but do it doesn't view it as an out. You shouldn't view it as an out, but all right. Flips a land, as foretold. Did not flip an as foretold. That would have killed him. Correct. That would have been a nice one. Never seen a Jun deck with an as foretold in it. Don't know how good it would be, but my God, we're doing it. Well, here's a Liliana. It's going to get this lesser raptor sacrificed. That's about it. Scooping it up. So, Matt? Takes a game here. That was Feral falls to the allies. Got it. Really, really kind of tells a tale about what people can accomplish when they band together. Absolutely, when people of different colors and tribes come together. But the same class. But the same. Yeah, if if you're a different class, just stay away. Oh. Yeah, it, it, it's the bourgeois, it's the it's the proletariat class <laughs> needs to come together. Yeah, they need to come together. They need to seize the means of production. Is Brother Kepi in the chat right now? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, if they were to all come together, we could we could overtake the necromancers. The necromancers, <laughs> these these bourgeois necromancers, uh, with all their foils we can do it if we all band together um, so in terms of the pro tour this weekend the pro tour metagame is often a bit skewed so I don't know that we're going to get like these super refined lists for regular use but I think we are going to see some really neat tech this weekend yeah that's what I love. I love it when you find that like uncommon that you've been leaving on the table after your drafts. Yeah. Just turns out to be just like, man, this card is really great in this specific <laughs> matchup. Right. Just like, oh, all those Eldrazi Sky Spawners that I literally threw in the garbage last week after <laughs> drafting them are now should worth be, fifty cents a piece. Should be playing those in modern, as it turns out. <laughs> man, that card. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, that was that was an exception. And it was only a common, so so you were able to recover pretty much. Yeah, I, w I was not hurting. I wasn't going to play that deck anyway. Um, but what deck do you think is going to come out on top this weekend? Um, I think it's going to be a teamer deck. Okay. It would surprise me if it was the four-color one that gets to splash around for uh, the... The Scarab God? I'm sorry. The Scarab God? Sure. Scarab God's a very powerful card. Um, uh, so, Shoe Seal, there's 
no chance he is not a feral mancer. What is that a? Is that a? Uh, Life return? return. Yep. Interesting. How about that pro color, you dum dum? Ooh, Farrell doesn't have his third land. He was trying to have the greatness there and just didn't get there. The cost for greatness this time was a giant Eldrazi coming back and dealing you three damage. Terminating response. Alright, the Raptor is a 2 2, so he can. Gets oh the man, is Feral going to get allied here? Um, doesn't look like it. So the Kozilek's return in response to the next comes into play trigger is a huge deal. Right. I think he might just attack instead, just attack without the comes into play trigger. Yeah, so you definitely do that. Because if he can land Collected Company in response to the Kozilek, like the forced Kozilek's return. Oh yeah, if he plays the forest, then you're in great shape. I believe we're going to get a Collective Brutality here, though. So, right. Neg 2 on the Raptor, Drain 2. Um, our subpar Spider Monkey will catch up here sooner or later. Yep. Does have the Temple Garden. If he uh, had the Coco. I would have. I would have faked it. But that's just my opinion. Well, so there's no point in faking it now. We got a Bajuka Bandit. Bajuka Bandit? This guy's going to get bigger when he and he can't block. Yeah, the Bajuka Bandit cannot block. Doesn't have banding. All right. Bob down. So Farrell's just living on a hope of prayer in the top of the deck. Hope of prayer and a Kozilek's return, which this Bajuka Bandit has made light of. Yep, here's a Maelstrom Pulse to take down the largest ally. Now all of these guys are going to grow again. Staying well out of range of this Kozilek's return. Maybe not well out of range, but certainly out of range. Certainly not in range. Oh, this guy gives them menace. Dennis the menace. So now we need some real removal. This Kozilek's return looking pretty embarrassing. Yep. Uh, shame we missed the third land drop. That would have been the opportunity to cast that spell. Plays a single creature, which... Isn't going to get it done in terms of blocking. Yeah, he can't activate it either, so... He does have... If he has a removal spell, he can kill the menace guy. Well, I guess it only gives a menace when a creature enters a battlefield. Right, so he can kill it with the guy on the stack. Yeah. And then he could... Block. block effectively. And he still dies. So even if he terminates the menace guy, he's still, still dead to... Alright, let's just turn him all sideways then. YOLO. So yeah, what what Matt needs to do is he needs to cast any any ally here. Looks like he doesn't have the ally, which is a shame, but here we have a terminate. Has to block the three three. Alright, I don't know what is that a I'm trying to figure out what the foil in Matt's hand is. Uh, an Aether Vial? Okay. Man, that's a big boy foil. Foil Aether Vial. It's just a from the vaults foil. Still, it's a good thirty, forty dollar foil. Look, man. I'm just saying, I'm complimenting his his card. That's a solid one. Last card in hand is a land. I believe one of these ally lands gets a card back from your graveyard. Yes, the ally encampment does. Which I think he has. So he could do it. Okay, so Feral taking the cowardly Feralmancer way out, killing himself with a fetch land. 
Turns out, greatness has a cost even for the mighty Feralmancer. Yep, allies taking it down 1-2 here. What a what a night, what a Halloween night when allies gets to stand tall over the Jund. Right. Menace. Anything can happen on Halloween night. It's the time when the, the Boo. barrier between the material realm and the realm of the souls is at its thinnest. <laughs> so you get haunts coming back from the dead. Patrolling the streets. Don't go patrol any streets. We're going to be back here in about 20 minutes. The rounds, the rounds have been turning around, turned around pretty quick last time. So. Yeah, yeah, we'll be back soon. Um, be sure to stick around and uh, enjoy your break. Yeah, do that.